Hello guys, welcome to Linux Joy channel and today's topic is CentOS 7 booting process. That means almost every Linux operating system booting process will be covered in today's session. So for that purpose, I created one diagram you can see you can observe here so these are the five stages which are required to boot one operating system that is linux operating system today we are going to discuss so the first stage here you can see bias that means basic input output system it performs post and after that it loads to the mbi so that goes to stage 2 here so what is mbi it's a master boot record and it loads to the bootloader after this diagram i'm going to explain everything clearly uh, from stage 1 to stage 5 uh, this is a simple diagram you have to just look look for the diagram so what are the stages are required to load a send os on operating system so that's it uh, just concentrate this diagram right now and next is stage 3 for bootloader what it will do bootloader loads the kernel in the ram as well as init ram fs image in ram so what is init ram fs we are going to discuss after this diagram explanation and stage 4 its kernel it initializes the first process that is system d in centos 7 and second system d loads the default target the default target here is the graphical user interface so these are the five stage and the last one this is stage 4 and the last stage is the login prompt so that means the operating system is booted and you can find the login prompt means uh, the linux operating system successfully booted from your hard disk so this is these are the five stages right now i am going to close this next there is it's a very lengthy theory part you have to bear with me because i don't have any option instead of explaining you so i hope you understand so i'm going to open the file that is in my documents created so where is the documents uh, sent away this is the file okay. Okay, maybe I'll can see increase the font. Maybe it possible or not. Tools spelling different. It syntax. Oh, um, buffers window. Yes, control. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. no problem uh, so first of all this is you can see bias see bias is nothing but basic input output system you know that it is a small program which is uh, stored in read only memory that is rom chip on the motherboard of the computer so when the computer is on this is the program that is executed so it it runs the program the program is run regardless any operating system that is installed on your machine so it is not associated with any operating system and after what it will do first it will perform post that means power on self test bias perform post you can find here um so yeah that is post you can you know, post is nothing but power on self test uh, which it will check all the hardware components working properly or not so bias post will perform by bias as well as you can if you want to go to the bias setup you can simply press F12 or F2. You can observe here F12 or F2. So 
when you press these keys you can go to the buyer setup uh, and these keys are various i mean these keys are different with uh, depend on your machine manufacturer that means that is your laptop or desktop whatever it may be after post the buyers will check for the bootable device a bootable device is nothing but your floppy disk hard disk flash drive anything what why why it is checking for the bootable device means first it will go to the first sector of the bootable device that is the first sector of the bootable device contains the mbr that is master boot record you can find here mbr master boot record so it will check it will look for the mbr and hand over the controls to the mbr so that is the first step when you switch on a linux operating system and the next step is mbr master boot record so obviously just now i told you this is the first sector which is stored on any bootable device so the mbr the size of the mbr is 512 bytes and is divided into three parts so first part is 446 bytes which contains bootloader so and the second 64 bytes have partition table that means your hard disk information it will have and the last two bytes is for mbr error checking if you have uh, if you want to check your mbr that two bytes are required so the main job of the mbr is to look for the bootloader and passes the control to it so the second stage is completed and third stage is bootloader so in centos 7 the default bootloader is grub2 in older machine it has lilo so what it will do it gives an option uh, from which os or kernel would you would you like to boot your machine so from which os or which kernel to boot to boot your machine so if you have you if you have multiple operating system in your machine it will choose the option in in boot in bootloader it will it will give the option so which operating system if you want to select a tool load and next the main job of this bootloader is to look for the kernel right and load into the memory that means memory is nothing but in ram as well as kernel and it will look for any tramfs file image so both should be loaded into the memory so this is the job of the bootloader so bootloader configuration file can be find so next bootloader what it is doing you can observe here so bootloader configuration file can be find in slash boot slash grub2 slash grub.cfg this is the configuration file for menu settings configuration you will find one file is there that is slash etc slash default slash grub so after the bootloader the bootloader passes the controls to the kernel so here is the kernel uh, kernel initially load in read only mode actually the kernel initializes the first process in center OS 7 that is the first process in center OS 7 that is system d uh, and next what it will do so it manages all the memory and input output devices in short we can say that it control over all the system so kernel what it do kernel manage uh, kernel is compiled with all the drivers but they are not able to load the real file system because it requires some additional drivers so for that additional drivers it take the help from init ram fs image so you can find init ram fs image here so I'm checking this kernel so init ram fs what it will do whatever the required additional drivers it will find uh, and it will load into the memory so that is the use of the init ram fs and init ram fs gets decompressed and first it loads a temporary file system that means to access the real file system first init ram fs do the uh, init ram fs do the load the temporary file system in the memory so kernel first loads this, uh, loads into the memory after that it doesn't have uh, 
it doesn't have full driver so that so that's the reason the init ram fs come to the picture and it will it will get all the required drivers and it gets decompressed and it loads a temporary file system so these are the two things which done by kernel and next what after loading the temporary file system init ram fs do what it will do first it loads a temporary root file system next it contains minimum set of drivers which can act as a bridge to real file system so i mean in ram fs has the set of drivers which can act as a bridge to real file system so what it will do with that uh, drivers it detects all the device drivers and uh, needed are needed to load actual file system and it loads from temporary file system first it will load the temporary root file system and it has the minimum set of drivers uh, which can act as a bridge to real real file system so what it will do it detects all the drivers which are needed to load the actual file system and it loads from the temporary file system right after that other partitions like logical value manage logical values and raid etc are mounted so real file system is mounted right now and other partitions like lvm writes are also mounted the next thing what it will do so the init ram fs part is done here so it will unmount there after mounting these uh, lvm and raid next what it will do so if you want to see all the kernel init ram fs files you will find in slash boot directory so let's see sorry uh, that is my system and uh, i have to go to the kernel cd here uh, this is my centos 7 server you can observe here if you want to check go to cd sorry cd slash boot if you press enter type ls here so you can observe here so init ram fs files these are the image init ram fs files and vm lines the kernel files which are started with vm lines these are the kernel files so these are the init ram fs image files and these are the kernel files which are we can see in slash boot directory just now we discussed what is the use of the kernel files and the init ram fs image files and the last thing is system d so after this kernel is start the system d process which he has which we previously discussed uh, system d process in my previous classes so if you don't have any idea about that system d and system ctl comments i'm going to give the link uh, in the cards here and as well as i will add that uh, i will add that video this video's end of the screen so you can find the video there which is uh, which is going to explain about system d and system ctl commands so it will start the kernel will start the system d process and with process id is 1 we know that the first process in center uh, 7 is the system d so what it will do system d the configuration file is system d is slash etc slash system d and as well as the default target that is loaded in that is located in slash etc slash system d here you can observe the system d process what i'll do system slash default target so what is the default target here is graphical target that means the booting process is completed now we can see the login prompt there so the system is ready to access i mean the booting process is completed successfully there is no errors so now we are going to log in the system and we can use the services so that is the use of the system d here you can observe some additional information is uh, here d stands for daemon and daemons are the programs runs in the background to perform various tasks so services are referred to one or more demons so system d configuration file you can find here so i'm going to show you that also cd and go to cd 
slash etc slash system d press enter ls so this is the directory for system d configuration files right uh, system.conf user.conf bootchart.conf so these are the configuration file and default target if you want to go to the default target that is sys tm default target configuration file for that we have to use this cat, cat command that is cat slash etc slash system d slash system slash and the last one is default target press enter so you can find here so this file is part of systemd it's showing systemd is a free software you can redistribute it and or modify it under the terms of uh, generally not unix lesser general public license as blah 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 so here you can find the description is graphical interface so documentation is you can find it is systemd requires a multi hyphen user dot targets in the so this target also explained in uh, system d and system ctl commands that is first process of the center by seven so you you will find all those things in that video which i am going to add in the links or end of this video you can observe that so that means here you can find graphical is interface and multi-user iphone that the target so in this way the linux that means CentOS 7 booting process is completed successfully. We can see the login prompt. So actually this is one of the main concepts uh, which is very helpful in real time. So that's the reason I am explaining very carefully as well as I wrote this document to explain you. So I hope you understand this well. And if you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Okay, this is Linux Joy and share this video as many people as you can and please click on that bell icon to get the latest videos notifications from my channel. This is Linux Joy signing off. Have a nice day.